guys, Snow here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, I have recently just come back from a convention. Uh, the convention was Yorkshire Cosplay Con that takes place in the Flag DSA Arena in Sheffield. Uh, and, um, well, today I'm going to do a con haul video, like I usually do when I've come back from these sorts of big conventions. Um, Yorkshire Cosplay Con is... Um, Mostly like a Comic Con, but instead of focusing heavily on the merchandise, it is more focused on individual artists and the cosplay. Um, now there are stalls there that do sell normal convention stuff, so like your Funko Pops and toys, figures, manga and all that kind of stuff. But most of them are um, individual artists just selling prints of their art, and some of them do actually... Um, offer to take commissions while they're there as well and the commission if you order a commission from them at the con some of them will actually do it cheaper or they'll offer you a deal where like say I don't know co the commission's normally like 20 quid or something they'll offer it for like 10 or 15 quid if you get it from the convention but if you go on their Facebook page and message them afterwards it will be normal price uh, I do. I did buy some art from some artists. Unfortunately, I didn't get business cards from the artists, so I can't credit them. I know I'm a <clears throat> I'm a bad person, but if I ever find out who did the art at any point in the future, I will update the description of this video and put the links to the artists' social medias in the description. That is, if I ever find the artists, I might not find them. Um, so we went down, it was over this weekend, it was the, was it the 17th, 18th, or 18th and 19th? Oh, it was the weekend just gone in May. And um, we went down on the Friday. Um, before we, and uh, we went to Meadow Hall, but before we actually got on the train, we went to a little comic shop that was quite local to me. Uh, I did make some pre-con purchases, but not as many as last year. Last year I went a bit overboard. Um, so, the pre-con purchases of this year. Uh, the first one was from uh, Kapow Comics in Huddersfield. Which is, we just um, had a quick, quick peek in there before we got the train. Because it had been a while since I'd been. Um, I went with my fiancé, it had been ages since he'd been so yeah there was some stuff in there that we were both looking for from what we'd seen on their facebook page so we decided to go have a look and the thing that i wanted to buy was there so i got volume eight of the gangster manga um this manga is awesome can get a little confusing at times but other than that it's a really good story um the main manga has actually been on a bit of a hiatus for a, a, a long time. So this is the first volume we've had in a while. And they had the the uh, the author had been focusing on a spin-off which focused on on this guy and the spin-off. So the spin-off sort of led to where this volume um continues from in terms of this guy's story. So as much as I would have preferred her to continue this one, I can understand the um, the spin-off. Yeah, so, volume 8 of Gangster. I'll put all the ones that I've shown down here. Um, so that was all the thing, and once we got into the hotel, we checked in, we went to Medwall, which is the, the big shopping centre in Sheffield. And the first shop we went to was The Entertainer, which is a toy shop in the UK. I don't know if any other countries have an entertainer, but over here it's um, it's a toy shop that does things relatively cheap. And I got a Jurassic World thing. Surprise, surprise. Uh, this is one of the story packs, which are normally, according to the entertainer, are normally valued at twenty pound, but they had them on offer at ten pounds, so I got one. And it was, and the one I got was the. Stiggy and the mercenary. So yeah. And the Stiggy has a gimmick. Uh, a review of this will be coming at some point. 
I just got to figure out when because I've got a bit of um, a backlog with reviews at the moment because I'm a little bit behind so yeah I got the got that Jurassic World thing uh, we also went to the Lego store well, we went to quite a few shops but it was only that and the Lego store that I went to that I bought something from and at the Lego store they've got the opportunity to make your own um, like custom minifigure sort of thing so I made a Bob Ross just because I didn't really know who I was wanting to build I meant last last year I made um, Kogami from Psychopaths um, so I was thinking maybe a Gina but they they didn't have the right hair for Gina but then I just found the afro and I was just like hmm that's that's a Bob Ross right there so yeah I made a Bob Ross he's not fully accurate because they didn't have just a plain white shirt and they also didn't have plain black pants so he's got like freaking gothic pants on but no yeah Bob Ross uh, that was it for the pre-con haul. Go away, brush. Uh, so yeah, that was it for the pre-con haul. So now on to day one of the cons. This is the Saturday. Um, in terms of conventions, I actually enjoyed this one um, quite a bit more than last year's YCC. Um, even though last year, the guest... I was definitely looking forward to meeting the guest a lot well one of the guests a lot more of last year than this year uh, but just overall I think I had more fun at this year's con because you know, I made more I've made more friends and um, so yeah I've made more friends I bumped into an old um, a really old friend of mine from back from when she my friend lived around here she hasn't lived around here for a very long time so yeah bumped into her that was awesome and bought some cool stuff and won some cool stuff as well so anyway, we'll go to the the day one purchases i didn't win anything on day one the the competitions and the prizes were all on day two so we were on day one uh didn't buy i bought some badges but i didn't buy any art the actual art came in day two so we'll start off well might as well start off with the badges that i bought um these were oops. These were original artists' um, badges. So, and once again, I can't remember the actual artist, so I apologise. So I bought three badges because they had them at like three for something. They had them on offer. Uh, the first badge I got was this one. Uh, Born to make history. This is a Yuri on Ice badge. Oh, Yowi on Ice, as a lot of the fangirls call it. So yeah. Born to Make History, that's the name of the song. And yeah, that's the two main characters, Yuri and Victor. Uh, kissing. Uh, this artist was also a furry artist. So I got a couple of furry badges. Which is pretty cool. I got this one. This is like a... Oops. Where'd that go? There it is. Alright. Let me just grab that again. Hold on. I should have taken my paws off before I started showing you this stuff, but I wanted the challenge of holding things with paws. So yeah, I got that one, which I'm guessing is either this artist's mascot or it is their fasona. But yeah, it looks like um, a little deer, but it's really cute. And then I got this one. Which is like a more generic uh, furry trash one. I can't see the camera. There we go. So yeah, I got this one. This is more like a generic uh, furry trash one. Which I'm thinking I might actually clip to my fursuit head. Put it in this ear. So I got my, I got my asexual badge there. So I might put this furry trash one in this ear. I might do. Then again, I might just add this to my badge collection. But yeah, so furry trash one. Uh, that was it for badges. For day one at least. I did get some more badges at day two. I just a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, honestly, yeah, I can't remember that artist's name. But um, if one of you recognises the art style, especially from the, uh, the the little furry 
ones, um, please let me know. Um, the next one thing I got, I'm not actually showing you the stuff in order that I bought them in. Probably should, but I will. Um, I got this little figure from an anime um, figure stall. It's a fake. It is definitely a fake, but eh, I don't mind it being a fake. Uh, it's a little figure of Yukio from Blue Exorcist. I got um, I got a figure like this scale of um, is it Rin? His name is yeah, um, of the main guy. <laughs> I can't remember. It's been a while since I've watched Blue Exorcist. Um, I got a little figure of the main guy uh, last year, uh, going like full demon. So I got the blue flame. So I was just like, you know what? I might as well get a figure of his brother to go with him. Because why not? See, I got a little figure of Yukio. For some reason, his head is on a ball joint. I have no idea why. No, it's pretty cool. Uh, I did get a couple of Funko Pops. Because, um, you know, at conventions, Funko Pops are like the thing that people buy. Um, these Pops I have actually been looking for for a while. And I thought... Um, so when I saw them, they were a little bit more than retail, because retail price for normal size Funko Pops is £10. Uh, these were £12 each, which uh, I didn't really mind, because they were, they were these are Pops that I haven't really been able to find anywhere, aside from this one convention. So I've got uh, you from Seraph of the End, and I also got Mika from Seraph of the End. Yeah, I've... Uh, <laughs> I watched Seraph of the End the first time around a while back, I think it was like last year, and I loved it, uh, and then I watched it again, <laughs> loved it even more, and then I watched, and then I'm starting to introduce my fiancé to it, um, but we're only able to watch it when he's around here, because it's on Netflix and he doesn't have Netflix, uh, and he's liking it as well, so yeah, so I got two Funko Pops of you and Mika. Uh, they also had uh, Shinoa, but I already had her. I've, I've already got her from being Ember of Fiverr. Uh, they also had Yu's Demon Form, uh, but that was £25 because it's a rarer one. Um, I saw that uh, like last minute on day two, and I was running out of money. If I'd have seen it when I bought these, then I probably would have bought that one as well. But I, I saw it a bit too late. But oh well. So yeah, sorry for the end pops. And yes, I know, I've taken them out of the box. Sue me. I'm an out of box collector and the boxes go in the bin. Unless it's one where I get it signed or if it's like this super rare one that automatically comes in a pop protector, then I might keep the box. Um, I bought some manga. Because uh, there's this little uh, manga stall that was there. I think it was Sheffield Space Center. I think it was that was selling the manga. So, you know, I got volumes eight and nine of Seraph of the End. Um, I am I'm starting to read through the manga. Uh, so far, the ma um, so far the manga is um, basically word for word of the anime. Or the manga came first, so the anime is word for word of the manga. Yeah, we'll go, we'll leave it at that. Um, but um, the anime stopped part way through the manga, so there will be a point in this where this will go beyond the anime. And I'm quite looking forward to that. And then we've got my favourite character on the front of this one. Yeah, because we got Gurren. He's my favourite character. We did actually. Um, I did actually find a uh, cosplayer of this guy. I found a Gurren cosplayer, uh, but we're waiting in line for one of the guests. So I had to just tap him on the shoulder and say, um, and just ask him that once he was done, because he was ahead of me. So I had to ask him that once he was done, uh, would he mind waiting at the side, cause, so I could get a picture with him. Uh, he was very, uh, he was very nice. He did, um, he did. Uh, wait for me. So that was it was nice of him at least. 
And that is now my profile picture on Facebook. <laughs> the picture I got with the... There you go. Um, the last things that I got on day one were photos and autographs with one of the guests. Um, the guests that I... There were, there were quite a few guests. But the guest that I was mostly wanted to meet is J. Michael Tatum. Who, if you don't know, he is an anime voice actor. Uh, most known for being Sebastian from Black Butler. So that's like his most, his like most well-known role. Um, the ones that I also know, he's also been Erwin in Attack on Titan. Okabe in Steins Gate. Uh, I think he was Ray in the free dub. Um, he was someone in Book of the Hero Academia, but I don't watch that. Kill me. <laughs> I'm going to watch it at some point. But yeah, he was someone in Book of the Hero Academia. Um, he was Sukiyama in Tokyo Ghoul. And I, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. Um, I was wearing this on the day that I met him, but I was also wearing um, an Okabe cosplay. So I was doing like a furry Okabe. And I was hoping that there was going to be some Okabe pictures there to get signed. But there weren't, so I had to go with my next favourite character of his, which is Sebastian from Black Butler. There we go. So there's the little message to Abby. Yes, my lord. And then, if you can see it, there we go, we'll reflect it in the light. There is his mahoosive freaking autograph, <laughs> his freaking signature. His, his, his signature is huge. But yeah. There were two Black Butler pictures. One My Hero Academia. And one um, Irwin Attack on Titan picture. But I chose this one because. I don't know. I just like this one. It's a cute one. But yeah. I went to see him for Steins Gate. But unfortunately there wasn't anything Steins Gate to get signed. And I wish I'd taken my copy of the DVD with me. Uh, anyway, I also got a picture with him. There we go. Yeah, I got a professional photo with him. So there you go. There, you can see what I was wearing. So yeah, so that's what J. Michael Tatum looks like. This is the only thing um, I could do with him that was Steins Gate related since there wasn't any um, pictures of Okabe that he could sign. So yeah, so I I got a I got a photo with him at least. Uh, there was also earlier in the day. There was um, there was like a Steinsgate meetup, um, like cosplay meetup. But obviously fans who weren't in cosplay could go. Only four people turned up. There was me, the organizer, one of the organizer's friends, and this other random person. Uh, so we had two Okabes, there was me and the random person. Uh, the organiser was Kurisu, and the friend was um, Mayuri. <clears throat> we also had the photographer. Uh, the photographer was sort of cosplaying as Daru, but wasn't in any of the pictures because he was the photographer. So yeah, officially we had two Okabes, a Kurisu and a Mayuri. So, that was day one, over and done with. Oh, there was also plenty of furries there. Um, I've been to MCM before, MCM Manchester and London. Um, there are plenty of furries at MCM. But MCM, you are literally walking around like a penguin huddle. You cannot, you can't even do that. You're literally having to walk like freaking penguins. So... The MCM uh, Comic Cons are not very fursuit friendly. So you're more likely to find the furries gathered outside, at least at London. YCC, on the other hand, is very, very cosplay and fursuit friendly. I have, a, I think the, um, the organisers themselves are, they either are furries or they just love furries. Um, yeah, there was, there's a lot more furries at YCC than there was at the MCMs. Just because it is more fursuit friendly. Uh, there wasn't as many as what they would, as what they probably would have been, just because on the Saturday, 
on the Saturday at least, um, there was the Leeds, I believe it was the Leeds fur meet going on at the same time. Because there was a few furries um, that were there last year that weren't there this year because they were at the Leeds furs. Uh, so anyway, we'll move on to the day two stuff now. The day two stuff. Day two is where the um, the, the, the prizes happen as well as purchases. Uh, we'll start off with purchases first. So the, the anime figure stand where I got the Yukio figure. Um, I went back and got... Oop, don't fall over. And I got this uh, figure of Rin. Just so I could finish the set. Because there, there was three figures in the set. There was fully fully Demon Yu, um, Rin. I'm getting confused with Seraph at the end now. There was fully Demon Rin. There was the Yukio, and then there was like normal Rin in his school uniform just with his tail, which I think is cute. I like tails, okay? See, so I got that, they got this literally just so I could finish the set. Uh, also from the same store, they were selling definitely fake. I don't think they were selling anything official. But they were selling little, tiny Pokemon figures. And I got one. They were like 75p. And I got this little tiny Braviary. <laughs> you can't really see it. It, not, it is red on the back, but it's not like the right red. So, yeah, you can tell this is fake. But yeah, I got this little tiny Braviary figure. And just because I love... Well, I'm, I'm starting to get more into Pokemon. And I love eagles. So, this is like a good one for me to get. Put you down there. Um, that's a win. Uh, we also went back to the stall where I got the uh the Seraph Funko Pops from. I think it was Dark Side Toys. I'm wanting to say. But anyway, so we went back. We went back to that stall anyway. And I got a Funko Pop key ring of Rainbow Dash, which I think is it's adorable, and she's now facing the wrong way. Come on. So there we go. Yeah, I got a Funko Pop keyring of Rainbow Dash. Because it's cute. I needed to come away with something My Little Pony related. Um, Where's this other toy store? I got a Transformer. My, my fiancé would... <laughs> my fiancé was proud that I bought a Transformer. Um, there was this one store that was selling, like, second-hand toys. Um, there was a big pile of Nerf guns under the table, which, if I had the money and the space, I would have bought. Well, more, more the space. I had the money at the time. Um, if I had the space, I would have bought a big Nerf gun. But no, I came out with a Transformer. And it's from Age of Extinction, so it's a movie Transformer. And it's the um, the action battler Grimlock. Which, when these first came out, they they were literally just gimmicky gimmick transformers that were basically shelf warmers uh, but when this guy came out we saw one I saw one in the shop when he came out but because of it was only a gimmicky one and at the time I think they were like £10 I didn't want to pay that for him so I left him and I kind of regretted it but I found him for £3 at this store so that's good I finally got him and now I just need Slug and the Snarl of the gimmicky ones. Uh, for, the, now for the actual art that I bought, once again, uh, I don't know the artist. Uh, I'm going to have to struggle to get these out of their little baggy. Unless I have to take my hand off. I'm going to take my paw off to do this. There we go. I can put my paw back on now. So from this artist I bought three prints and three badges. We'll do the badges first. These badges are even smaller than the first ones. So as you probably know, I am a huge fan of Detroit Become Human. Despite having never played the game myself. And this artist was selling little Detroit badges. So I bought... The Connor one, because Connor is best boy, 
bought a little corner badge. Uh, I also bought some badges that they've done for YouTubers. Yeah, for a couple of YouTubers. So, uh, I bought... Oh, balls. <coughs> God damn it, now I have to pick it up again. Uh, got it. I bought Markiplier, bought a Markiplier badge, and and the Jacksepticeye badge, because I love those guys. Now for the art prints, these are all like postcard size, and they're all Detroit Become Human, uh, of the three main characters. So we have uh, Kara, Kara print, and we have Marcus, look how cute they are. These are like very like Funko Pop style, up. it's like very Funko Pop style, I think. And I also uh, got the Connor. If I remember rightly, this, um... This store was also selling custom made uh, Funko Pops. I didn't see any Detroit ones, but they did have a Mark and a Jack. They also had Stitch wearing a Toothless onesie and Toothless wearing a Stitch onesie, which was adorable. See, that was it for purchases. Uh, now on to prizes. Um, while I was there, I got to meet a YouTuber that, um, that I like called Super Sorrel. He's a toy reviewer and he's one of he's one of the YouTubers that got me into doing the toy reviews that I do on this channel. And and I finally got to meet him. I met him on the Saturday. Uh, Saturday morning first thing and then I saw him again later on. But I initially met him on the Saturday morning. And on the Sunday he was hosting a Marvel quiz. Oh, uh, I got an itch. Yeah. He was hosting um, his own Marvel quiz, so me and the fiancé entered. We didn't do very well, but because there wasn't that many groups, every group got a prize. And we got a pack, like a three pack of Funko Pint Size Heroes uh, for Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, there was three in the pack, there was two that you knew and one that you didn't. Uh, Dale Fiance took home two of them because we got Spider Man, Vulture, and Tony Stark. Uh, Dale took Spider Man and Stark home, and I got Vulture, which I'm alright with. I mean, you know, he's named he's named himself after a bird, so I'm happy with that. Uh, the next, the other thing that I won, I need to get the box over here for that. Um, the Sunday, in terms of things to do for us, the Sunday was more panels. The Saturday was the day that we looked around the stalls, we bought more, most of the things, uh, we met the guest, and we looked at the cosplays and stuff like that. So the sun, the Saturday was looking around the stalls, and the Sunday was more panels. Uh, and we had a bit of time to kill, well... Most we no we we needed to kill time before this panel started, so we both entered um, a Mario Kart gaming tournament. Uh, it was Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube, and uh, I came second. Yay! Um, it was pretty close between me and the guy that came first, so yeah, it it was a good tournament. But yeah, there you go. There's my name. I came second, yay. And the prize that I got is the box. Was uh, that's the back of the box. Yeah, the prize I got was this Sega Mega Drive console. Um, at first I thought because it comes with ten games pre-installed, so at first I thought that that was it. You could only play these ten games that are pre-installed. Like the um, like Nintendo when they brought out the SNES Mini and Sony when they brought out the PlayStation One Mini, 
you can only play the games that pre-installed onto it. But it turns out that this this um, console, as well as you know, you know, you can play the ten pre-installed games, but this thing also runs original Sega Mega Drive game cartridges, which um, yeah, we found out by googling it because I opened it. Uh, I took it out of the box and the cartridge slot actually opened up and there was, you know, there was circuits in there and I thought that was a bit odd for something that was just going to be plug and play only the pre-installed games. So me and Dale looked into it a little bit and it turns out this can actually play original Sega Mega Drive cartridges as well. So, I am really happy with this. Um... As you probably remember, if you remember from one of my other videos, uh, I work in a charity shop. Well, I volunteer there, don't, I'm not paid work. And um, someone donated a Jurassic Park game for the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, I got it anyway just because it's something Jurassic Park to add to my collection. But now, thanks to this, I can actually play it and I'm so, I'm so happy that I, I won this thing. Because the way it was, it was whoever made it to the final, so basically first and second, um, got a prize anyway. But first place got to choose out of the two prizes, and then second place just got what was left. The other prize, the one that the the winner actually chose, was um, at this uh, Crash Bandicoot box that was full of just Crash merch. But um, yeah, it did look pretty cool. But then we went on uh, a website because we wanted to see, after getting this, we kind of wanted to see what was in the box of Crash merch. And it turns out it was just like key rings, mugs, glasses, coasters and hat and stuff like that. So, eh, kind of crap. This is definitely the better prize, especially since I now know it can run um, cartridges as well as the games that are already on it. So, yeah. I'm really glad that the guy chose the crash stuff and left this and left the console for me because I love it. This is now, I mean, this is like a reissue, so this would have been like in you know, like this century. Uh, the original Mega Drive came out in 88 in Japan, so it was like a late, late 80s, early 90s console. But yeah, I'm just glad that I now like, actually own a retro console. And I can't wait to plug this in and play Jurassic Park on it. I'll play some of the pre-installed games on it, but it comes the well the games that it comes with are Alien Storm, Altered Beast, Columns, Eswat City Under Siege, Fatal Labyrinth, Golden Axe, Shadow Dancer, Sonic. This, as you can see on the front, this is a Streets of Rage edition. But yeah, I'm super glad I got that. So anyway, uh, that was my haul, uh, winnings, pre-com purchases and actual com purchases. Um, so that, that's, that's about it, that's all I can really say. Um, it, was an, it was a fantastic con. If you're in the UK, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a con that's worth coming up from abroad for, uh, but it's an amazing con for UK people. So I can, if you're in the UK, I can definitely recommend you going to YCC next year. Um, I don't know when it's going to be next year. Last year, it was in June, or was it July? Well, it was in May this year and it was in a different month, so I can't exactly say when it's going to be next year, because it seems to just change every year. Um, but yeah, I can, I can re definitely recommend it. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I shall see you all in the next video, whatever that will be. Bye! Oops.